No one can deny that Lewis Hamilton is the most successful Formula 1 driver of all time, and arguably, he's the best of all time as well. His record of winning a race in every season he's been in F1 is incredible for someone with a 16-year career. He has also only ever been beaten by his teammate over a whole season once before. They are two records to be proud of, but something is going to happen to both. Want to know what? Then keep watching till the end. The W13 has probably been the worst car Lewis Hamilton has ever driven in Formula 1. Lewis certainly said it enough earlier in the season. And the worst thing for Mercedes is that they got it wrong so early on in the design cycle as well. The problems weren't small issues they could resolve with a wing or a few vanes or even a new side pod. When Mercedes thought last October that they could run the W13 on the floor, they made a terrible judgment call, and Toto Wolf says this is where it all went wrong. The car was doomed from the drawing board, not because of some side effect of having different side pods. Mercedes have fallen below expectations in 2022. The Silver Arrows unable to mount a stern defense of their Constructors' Championship and unable to give Lewis Hamilton the platform to win that record-breaking 8th World Drivers' Championship. At the United States Grand Prix, Max Verstappen took a record-equaling 13th victory of the season, while his Red Bull team secured the 2022 Constructors' title. With that, Mercedes' streak of dominance, which began back in 2014, is now over. Mercedes brought their final 2022 upgrade package to Austin, so asked by Sky Sports F1 if these are applicable to the 2023 car, Wolf replied, I think we understand more now what it is where we got it wrong with the car. We can almost trace it back to a single decision last October. We thought we could run the car on the deck, but you can't, so it's a small level of hamster steps. As long as the trajectory is going up, even with small backlashes, I think we're on a good path. The combination of the mistake made in October last year, the failed attempts at making the car work when it was on the deck, and the lack of quality from the final upgrade of the year means that Hamilton's records are in trouble. George Russell is on track to finish above Hamilton in the Drivers' Championship, something only ever achieved by Nico Rosberg back in 2016. And after failing to secure a win in America, his remaining chances are numbered. But does Hamilton still have faith in his ability? We will find out in a second, but first, let me tell you about today's sponsor, which can help you improve your abilities. I know a lot of you watch my videos and think, wow, this guy really gets Formula 1. I wonder where he learnt all this stuff. Well, I like to think that's what you say to yourself anyway. But to be honest, I didn't learn anything about Formula 1. I just learnt college-level maths and science, and then learned how to apply it to the real world, and therefore Formula 1. You can do that too using Brilliant. This incredible e-learning site gives you a hands-on education in maths, science, and computer science. Their lessons are aimed at people of all ages, whether you're as young as Yuki Tsunoda or as old as Helmut Marko. Brilliant will have lessons perfect for you, and more are added every month. It isn't just about being better at STEM subjects either. I'm taking these lessons and it's helping us produce better content for you guys. You think I picked up Adrian Nui's book and suddenly knew how fluid dynamics works? Absolutely not. I had to learn the science behind it all first, the building blocks of building a Formula 1 car. And it isn't just Formula 1 that's getting easier to understand now, it's everything, because Brilliant has helped me be a better thinker. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash gpculture or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Perhaps the Mercedes team should have taken some courses on Brilliant before designing the W13. Perhaps they did this year because they now know that they need to change the whole DNA of their car to be competitive with Red Bull and Ferrari next year. Mercedes has made clear that the update work it is doing late in the season is intended to help the direction of its car for 2023, which was set to change after finding issues with this year's concept. The DNA of the car is going to change for next year, that's clear, said Wolf. It doesn't necessarily mean that our bodywork is going to look very different, but certainly what is part of the DNA of the car, the architecture of the car, will change for next year. Those upgrades haven't helped Hamilton secure that first win of the season, though. Lewis said that he felt so much hope that a first win of the 2022 season was on at the United States Grand Prix. Following Carlos Sainz's early exit, Hamilton became an outside bet for the victory as race leader Max Verstappen continually found his lead cut due to multiple safety cars. The Mercedes man then opted for the undercut, and it really did look like it may be his day, when a slow pit stop for Verstappen not only allowed Hamilton to overtake the Red Bull man, but Charles Leclerc too. 
I feel shattered, Lewis told David Coulthard in his initial post-race interview. The car was a handful today. It felt amazing, firstly to be in the lead. That's something we've been working so hard on as a team through the year, and I felt so much hope. But it's okay, we'll hold on to that, we'll keep pushing. Go try and get everything we can in these next three races. It will come to us at some stage. That is Hamilton's winning mentality on show. Even after all the disappointment and setbacks this season, even after losing out in the final few laps of the race, he can still say that a race win will come this season. A part of him still believes he can hold on to that record of a race win in every one of his 16 seasons in Formula 1. But unfortunately, the United States Grand Prix probably was the best chance of it happening. When asked if he thought he could maintain his record of a win every season, a feat unmatched by any other F1 driver, Hamilton said he believed his best shot had gone. We really need to be realistic. The Red Bull car has been the fastest car by far all year, and it's still the fastest car, he said. It was great to have started third and been in a position to fight, but on true pace, they've been ahead of us all weekend. They were on Sunday, and they will be the next three races. So unless something drastic happens to any more of them, then it's highly unlikely that we'll have the true pace to be able to compete with them. Like Lewis says, to get that win, they need Red Bull to have a problem, or for someone else to make a mistake, and so far this season, that hasn't really happened. Nonetheless, the seven-time world champion will be ready to pounce if an opportunity presents itself. Beating his much younger teammate in the Drivers' Championship might be more of a problem, though. You all know the Nico Rosberg memes, the only person to have beaten seven-time world champion Lewis Hamilton in the same machinery. Well, as things stand, that meme might be dead, because George Russell is on track to beat Hamilton this season. George put his money where his mouth is early on in the season, and backed up his claims that he was at Mercedes to win titles by outperforming what his team and Lewis thought was possible in the W13. George's lead over his teammate currently sits at 20 points, but can Hamilton reel him in in the next three races? Russell has not beaten Hamilton in qualifying since he qualified on pole in Hungary and came into the US GP weekend off the back of two particularly difficult events in Singapore and Japan. He said after qualifying sixth at Austin, where he was half a tenth slower than Hamilton, that he and the team did not know why he'd suffered a tricky couple of races. It seems like as Mercedes has developed the car this season, Hamilton has started to get comfy. This has had the opposite effect on George, though. Hamilton is now performing more consistently, after a disrupted first part of the campaign in which he was less at ease with the W13 and was also conducting more experimental work. At Austin, Russell's 0.041 second deficit was slightly flattered by the fact Hamilton could not improve on his second run, when a loose car balance meant Hamilton's lap got increasingly wayward. Team boss Toto Wolff reckoned Hamilton should have been two temps faster than he was, which would have given him a bigger buffer to Russell. Russell has Wolff's full confidence that he's going to get back there in terms of his comfort in the car and outright performance, but in the meantime, he has still been scoring good results. He has two podium finishes in five races since the summer break, although different circumstances would likely have meant Hamilton scored those results instead. Hamilton had a grid penalty at Monza, where Russell was third, and was hobbled by strategy in Zandvoort, where Russell took advantage to finish second. Hamilton may not be able to save his record of winning in every season. Will he be beaten by George Russell, though? We definitely don't think so. Want to know more about what's going on in F1? Then click the link on your screen and I'll see you there.